All right, we are live. Thanks for tuning into the Sheet Metal Shaping Podcast, where we discuss the pursuit of sheet metal shaping education through traditional coach building techniques. My guest today on the show is Ludo Roland, all the way from Europe. What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> all good. All good here. Thank you for having me on the show. Man, this is uh, this is awesome. I've seen your stuff on Instagram, and I had to laugh this morning. Uh, did you see the post? I saw the post. Uh, it was either you or, or Steve put up. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I'm... Office. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to to prepare to get prepared to having everything set up for the for the for the podcast and not having issue with the technology. Yeah, <laughs> and I work with other metal shapers, so obviously they they were having a laugh at me. So. That's so funny. So today we're going to talk about the um, uh, being a freelance coach builder. You're a, you are a freelance coach builder. I've never heard of this before, but I love the concept. You're like the James Bond of metalworking. You just swoop around, <laughs> swoop around Europe and. <laughs> build cool stuff tell the folks what a freelance coach builder actually is uh being a freelance it's uh exactly like owning a shop and then being on i mean on your own having a company but without having a workshop so i'm a kind of a contractor uh people contract me for a for a job so before being a freelance, I've been an employee in different companies in different countries. Yeah, because I like to travel, I like to discover, and I'm really, I'm really passionate about about metal shaping. <laughs> and uh, I've known I've known some people, and I said oh, I'd like to be more free, because being an employee, you kind of you depend of a of a company, and it, it's very nice. I I've been, I enjoy it. Because you know that at the end of the month your pay gonna 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 fall and yeah you're gonna be paid and it's okay. But being on your own, you follow the good project. You can follow the good project and you can when you have the good contact is cool. And so I've been traveling around Europe, following following uh, companies. I mean uh, yeah. contact that I've made along my previous career. To, when did you get to started do doing cool this project? Yeah. And it's, when did you and it's very cool. I mean, it's, it's very cool. There is a lot of work. There's tons of work. So <laughs> you don't have to pick up the phone to look for work. It's just uh, you, you have to be able to say no because uh, you have no holiday. <laughs> when did you get started doing this type of work? Uh, uh, coach building, especially uh, around 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. But uh, more generally, metal work and... Uh, what we call carrosserie in French, in France, in French, yeah. uh, 15 years ago. Before I, I started by doing a truck construction. So I learned how to weld, how to fold sheet, how, all that kind of stuff. And, but I knew already I wanted to do, I wanted to be a metal shaper. So it took me a while to acquire the, the, the base, the skills that are the base of our of our profession, I think, which is welding, uh, developing uh, profile, uh, folding, and all that grinding, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then I, I've been able uh, to to access of a at a restoration company and a restoration job. Yeah, but yeah, around ten years ago. Uh, so when you were a kid, were you always out there playing in the sandbox with, with different toys and like building sandcastles or, or how did this evolve from when you were a kid to today? Uh, actually, it's very funny. Uh, I'm from a part of, Fr I'm from France and I'm from a part of France that it's not at all, uh, there is no culture of cars. I'm from the mountains. And so people like to do bikes and to run. <laughs> so, uh, there isn't many company where I'm around. I'm from a woodworking family. So my father is a woodworker. And uh, when I was young, he, I helped him uh, make a soap box. Mm. And I started to, to go around the village because it was, there is a lot of hill. Yeah. And I started to do soap box like that. And I said, ah, I could be cool to upgrade and to do better things. And uh, yeah, from very young, I knew I wanted to build transport transport solution I, th I don't know if uh, we can resume it like that but yeah building building cars building cars yeah. at the end it's, it is what it is it is what it is <laughs> you must it's... have had the most beautiful you must have had the most beautiful soapbox in all of france with... <laughs> <laughs> it was made <laughs> it was plywood plywood uh trash can wheel 
and also <laughs> so, so stuff like that. It was very sketchy, <laughs> very <Yeah>. sketchy. <laughs> but uh, I said, ah, oh, we could upgrade. And then I upgraded. Yep. It was the first one in plywood. And then uh, I've, um, it was uh, like a race, uh, they, uh, a fun association. I was um, organizing a race of soapbox. <laughs> and my, with my father, my father said, ah, oh, we could buy a... Um, we could buy a welder. And so he bought a welder. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned how to weld. Alone in, in the garage, I was like 10 or something. <laughs> I burned my face. <laughs> it was so sketchy. It was so sketchy, but it was awesome. And that's how I, I was yeah, totally into it. Really, really young, I, I, I thought I would end up as a lumberjack. I was, being, I was sure. I said, I'm going to be a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, yeah, at ten I discover welding and metal and and stuff, and I said, ah, you know what? Let's keep lumberjack on the side, <laughs> and let's try to become a a coach builder. Tell me about the and transition so. point. So at some point in your career, you said, okay, this is no longer just a hobby. Now this is a business for me. So how did that transition look when you made that jump? Uh. It's like I knew I have the chance that my father said said to me, if you have to do something, do it, do it at till the bottom. I mean, go go for it. And so I knew I if I if it didn't work, I could be a lumberjack just. So I wasn't <laughs> afraid. I wasn't afraid. I was like, I'm gonna try. What it what it what does it cost me? I'm, I'm yeah. just gonna try. Yeah. And so I um in France we have um, an associate. It's, I mean, it's kind of a school. Um, it's work like a school, but it's an association for preserving the the old profession and art, artisanal. Art, I don't know if I say it right. Yep. Artisanal yep. professions, mm -hmm. or in metal shaping. I mean, it's one of them. And I said, oh, I could go there, and I just went there, and I learned. I'm, I'm someone that. So I, I'm very curious. I like to learn stuff, uh, but if I'm not really passionate, I really go over it and go, uh, yeah. go over. But metal shaping is the only thing that growing up, I became more and more passionate about because more I learn and, and funnier is it and funnier it is. So I said, oh, that's awesome. And, and my passion grown in because more you learn and and more capacity you acquired and the possibilities became endless i mean the only limit is your imagination because you're able to in 3d to make whatever you want and yeah isn't it neat when you walk really into a when you walk into a shop and you see a pile of metal sitting there and you're like that could be an aston martin that could be a ferrari that could be a mercedes benz that could be anything you want right if you just put in the time it, Exactly. When I actually, it was the <laughs> the favorite sentence of the the head of the of the designer where I used to work in Italy. Mm -hmm. Every time a club was visiting the workshop, he brought them first. He brought them always. He brought them first to the sheet rack. He said, "Okay, your car is somewhere here." And this, it was his favorite sentence. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> we were working. It was like, here we go again. Look at him. Look at him. He's going to say it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Where did you acquire the skills to do what you do? Uh, I think I've, uh, how can I say? I, I started uh, on my own like trying to do stuff with a hammer and dolly. And and uh, the problem is at the beginning, when you start metal shaping, you don't do big piece. It's, all, it's often small parts and it doesn't really look good. And uh, some of my friends were a carpenter or a woodworker and wood is, uh, wood is hot, wood smell good. And they were like building houses. And I was uh, doing my little patches in steel. I'm like, what am I doing? At the beginning, you have some doubt, but you see the, I saw the potential. I mean, there is people able to build, I always had in mind a uh, 30s car, like Figoni and Falaci, Delays, mm -hmm. with big, uh, like huge wings. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is possible. It must be possible somehow. So it's true that I've, 
passed a lot of time on my own, uh, just uh, experimenting. And at the beginning, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> and when I was in, um, I was in a city in Tours when I was uh, 18, and I really pushed into uh, someone that today I'm happy to be able to call him my mentor. Like, can you, if you can't hire me, can I come and in the evening just to, to do stuff? He said, okay, if you want to come in the evening, okay, but you can't work on cars because I'm for the insurance and stuff. So if you want to yeah. do things, okay, but it's experimentation and for you, I'll give you subject to, to mm -hmm. try. And that's how it began. I was working during the day and in the evening, I was doing, I was going on this other workshop in Tours and I was uh, all the evening doing stuff and, and slowly it come and, and at the end, yeah. it, I mean, it's the passion that keeps you going. I mean, That's I like true. it. It's true. How much did you learn in person versus what you could have maybe learned online through YouTube or through books or through other resources? Well, I have to say YouTube always frustrated me. I liked, I always liked it because I was watching videos and there is a lot of amazing content that this, these people, I mean, I, I, I grew up watching Ron Covell's, Ron wow. Covell video and you see him doing stuff and it kind of, I mean, it's so easy when it's him doing it. <laughs> You're like, that's impossible. <laughs> like, that's, and so you try to reproduce it. What does he have? What does he has? Mm -hmm. that I don't and you try you try to understand and and sometimes you pass some time experimenting and when I was going to this shop on on, on the evening um my friend was telling me oh, yeah and what's the problem here I said I don't know I don't I can't get this right I said and he give you the little hint the, the little advice that unlock you the like the the part of the the part of the reflection you couldn't get at and you're like oh and actually it's not about it's not about the end it's all yeah. the mindset and the reflection and that unlocked so it's sometimes i think it's 70 percent 70 80 percent of experimenting on my own and this is insane how a little hint a little advice can <laughs> unlock you a lot of possibility and um also allow you to experiment further because even with the best advice you have to to try it. oh i can see um 20 percent there and so you try again you wheel you wheel or you hammer or you weld and, and it and it went and it come and it come that's i mean for me this is what it is it's what was the most frustrating of... part of that learning process <laughs> english wheel without <laughs> any doubt english wheel english wheel yeah. i mean because um because when you think about it, without knowing everything, anything, you 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 see an English wheel. You're like, this is pretty basic as if uh, how it works. I mean, it's two wheels. Yeah, it's two wheels. Just two wheel and pressure. Yeah. And, how hard? How hard it, can it be? Right? It doesn't do what you think, and it <laughs> yeah. doesn't. No, it's not what you think it is. And it's there is some little. It's it is yeah some little advice that can help you, and but you have to. It's like welding. You can't. Take a well a torch and just for your first try, just well, it's impossible. Yeah. Any any blacksmith that forge a hammer for the first time can make a hammer perfect on his first try. I mean, you always, I mean, you you have to experiment, and uh, it's I'm I'm still growing. Even today, I'm not at the level. I mean, I, I don't consider much myself at the end. I think I'm all right, but there is plenty, plenty of stuff to 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 keep learning because by traveling, by traveling, it I think it helps to put yourself in um, in question. I don't know if you can say that in English, but mm -hmm. you you ask just you you have your method your ability your skills your knowledge anything. and you meet you change country you meet other people that came that just come up with an all other solution an all other way you're like oh how is that possible and uh, it happens to me to to be on a workshop in italy 
and I arrived and I started to work and it was another guy close to me and uh, he was doing th something and I was like, this is not at all, but like not at all uh, how I would start it. But I'm right. very curious to see how he's going to do it. And he, and he just, and he did the job perfectly all right. And I said, whoa. And I, yeah. uh, you go, you talk to him, you're like, oh, but why do you do it this way? How do you start this way? And you learn stuff from, from the other. Actually, it's about, I think it's about stealing knowledge. You go yeah. around and you steal knowledge and yeah. you, because everywhere you go, you can always find um, a, pos a positive side, uh, uh, something good. There is everywhere, there is something good to learn. Everywhere. So when you were traveling around or you're still traveling around now, but as you traveled around, like, let's use the example of the, the gentleman you just spoke about. He did it one way. You would have approached it completely differently. How would he have done whatever it is that he was doing? And how would you have done that in the same process? <laughs> um, <laughs> the Italians, uh, first, the Italians like the power hammer. Right. They have these, uh, these what they call the Maglio. It's Maglio. Like yeah. A, yeah, the Maglio is like a huge sledgehammer on a, on yeah. a machine. And it, yeah, it's, it, uh, it's, it's huge and it's very noisy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not like a petting girl, but it, it, yeah, it, it's a power hammer at the end. Yeah. And so they work with that, that thing and they don't like, and they also work a lot with hard bugs. There's not too much, you, 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 you don't see a lot of uh, section bugs in, uh, in Italy. This is a lot of hard bugs. Hmm. And um, they don't like to weld. <laughs> Do something in one piece. Uh, ah, one piece. It will be one piece. And uh, when they would do something in one piece, I would put a weld in the middle to be, I don't know, to just to not having too much metal to move because sometimes in, it imply a lot of shrinking, a lot of stretching, and you're, you're like asking a lot to the, to the metal. Yeah. And I'm not always a fan of that. So, uh, but at the end, I mean, it was, I mean, it, it did well. He did well, yeah. but yeah, it was a big piece. Oh, what else? So when you're, when oh, you're touring around, what else have you seen other countries do that you maybe hadn't seen in France? Uh, what I haven't seen, oh, it's difficult to say. It's people, how can I say? When, when you're, when you work in your comfort zone, you, you come up with, with solution to the problem you, you meet. And it's, I think, insane to see how different countries come up with different solution. <laughs> and, uh, the fact that English people does everything with the English, everything with the English wheel. I mean, the English wheel is, oh, no. it's a saint. It's a saint. Yeah. It's insane. And, and, uh, that, that's really, yeah, I was like, wow. Even, even louvers, louvers with the English wheel. I was like, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen, yeah, I've seen stuff. I was like, wow. Okay. That's, uh, but with, with the same problem, different people, come up with a different solution. So you're like, hey, it's, if it work, it all that, all, I mean, the, at the end, all that matter is uh, if it work or not, if it works, that's okay. So, so that's why I never criticize. And I'm always a bit skeptical when I see people on YouTube saying the only good way, or, or if you do it this way, this is wrong. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is some heavy statement sometimes. And we're like, oh, open your mind. I mean, it's okay. True. We're all, I think we we should uh, we should trade more. It's a profession that is uh, well, not many to do that. So we should trade more and maybe passing less time to bitching on the others. <laughs> because right. sometimes this is what it is. Like, you know, <laughs> I yeah, for me, I don't care. I'm, I don't care. I just do my stuff better. Yeah. Over time, do you think you'd prefer to stay in one shop eventually, like back in your home base, or do you prefer to do the traveling thing so that you can continue to acquire the skills and the way that other people do it? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, I've, 
I enjoy I enjoy traveling, but it's like everything he has his negative side and his positive side. I've I'm I've met a lot of people. It, yeah. I mean, really awesome. I've learned a lot of stuff. I'm really happy to. I've worked on a very good project that I've I've worked on them because I was in the good place in the good moment. And I'm like, whoa, wow, that's very cool. Not that I'm better than another one, but I'm here, so I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun, but obviously it's a life where uh, you're always uh, on the road. I mean, I, I don't do small period. I mean, I'll always do a, a minimum three months at yeah. least. So, but you're a lot of time out, out of your uh, hometown and you're always around working a lot. So it's very cool, but uh, I start to feel the the need to maybe settle or actually maybe um finding a transition because uh when you are 25 um eating a eating a pizza in front in front of the washing machine when you're doing your washing machine under the rain in winter a sunday evening it's uh -huh. fun because it's adventure <laughs> when you go a bit later in your life, you're like, maybe <laughs> you're eating your pizza <laughs> in front of the washing machine. Like, <laughs> because you live in hotels or, uh, yeah, it depends. It depends on the company or where I am. Sometimes I live in, the, in, in people's house. I can find mm -hmm. Airbnb or stuff. But sometimes, no, I live in the... In, in a hotel and yeah you yeah. have to so it's not always easy but i enjoyed it and i speak in the past but i still do it a little bit mm. i like to settle a little bit because uh i found i just found a i just found I, I just come came back here in belgium and i actually quite enjoy working in belgium because i mm. work with other metal shaper i'm not alone and I'm not ready to open a workshop in the mountains. <laughs> no, I'm not ready for that. Even though it's a good uh, it's a good way to start to start your your own shop being freelance because you acquire knowledge, experience, contacts, and all the the benefits that you do. I mean, the money that you can you can acquire. Uh, I've put it in 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 tools. I've bought mm. an, an echo, the pool max and everything to nice. prepare myself to set up a workshop. But if I set up a workshop, I will be alone in a workshop and I'm used to going around and I'm not exactly ready to open a workshop alone yeah. in, in the mountains. So and you're more of a clients and managing the clients and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Are you more of a people person, extroverted or are you more introverted work by yourself? Uh, no, I'm more. Uh, no, I'm more of a people person uh, yeah. because you oftenly I uh, had to work in team, and so uh, you arrive in a new workshop with new people, new culture, and you have to adapt. And that's that is awesome for uh, also for um, actually adapting because uh, you have to you have to do the job at the end. Whatever tool they have, whatever you have to whatever method they want you to use, if they want you to gas weld or TIG weld, or uh, you have to to be multitask, multi-tool. And uh, so I've, I'm used to working in team. Although I, I like working alone, but being alone in a workshop, I, I've, I know people, I work for people that are alone in their workshop. And this is not, because you tend to work to stay late at night and doing big day and you're always alone and it, i don't know i don't know it's not no no it's not for me yet maybe right. when i will be retired and old with a white beard <laughs> and I'll be in my mountains yeah. and uh, <laughs> wheeling, wheeling my tunnel yeah. In the middle. yeah but uh for now i'm uh, i'm pretty happy to be with other metal shaper because also we share along the day like we 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 also make bets like oh yeah able to do it faster uh, i'm i do it this way you do it this way let's see and blah 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 and it's a constant uh 
I mean, it moves. It's it's really fun. I mean, it's really fun. Do you so, travel yeah. with tooling? Yes. Yes, yeah. I have a, a big toolbox. And uh, <laughs> I was a bit frustrated throughout the years that uh, Italian doesn't have the, the 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 English wheel. So I made an English wheel that fit in my van. <laughs> and it's, and it, yeah. But it's, uh, I, I saw the, the English wheel that you made. And it's not yeah. at all like, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, it's more of a, a tube one. It's yep. a tube thing, <laughs> and it fit in my van. So every time I arrived, uh, I arrived in Italy, and I go back there, I run and I unpack my thing, and like, oh, you brought that back. <laughs> that's so, that's <laughs> they, so they funny. Give me shit. You're the they only you're the shit, only person I've heard that. of to travel with an English wheel. That's so funny. It's uh, well, the van doesn't really like it because it. Mm. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I brought it here in a. Uh, in uh, in Belgium, and uh, I adapted the the wheel. I get rid of the uh, of the top wheel to put um, a rubber wheel. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a trolley wheel that I've adapted. Yeah, and I work with uh, some <laughs> some Englishmen, <laughs> and they and they are yeah they are having a lot of fun watching me with my English wheel, the trolley wheel. So they baptize the the wheel the the trolley. <laughs> and so yeah they are giving me shit all day but uh lately they all have used it so oh. <laughs> so now i said oh look at you you're opening your mind so yeah it's funny it's so it's so funny we have so much fun in the workshop there is no nobody's taking himself seriously it's so fun it's all fun but i made two englishmen using uh, three englishmen using a rubber wheel Yes. How about that? Interesting. What? Uh, yeah, I like it work? to. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it to bend, to use it to bend sometimes. Yeah. When, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, I found, I found it in interesting. Yeah, <laughs> more than the um, air chamber that you put on the top wheel, because mm -hmm. it used it mark a little bit. I'm being, you know, a bit precise, but I can have a wheel, so I just made a trolling wheel. I said, yeah. Oh, if I, I can be a bit precise, it's cool. Yeah. What are you working on these days? I know you have some secret projects that you can't talk about, but for the ones that you can, because <laughs> you're because you're James Bond, right? You're James Bond. No. <laughs> you're James Bond. <laughs> for the ones that you can talk well, about, or the uh, the 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 generalities of coach building, what are you working on these days? Uh, these days, I've switched. Uh, I've a bit let uh, prototyping because I do both prototypes and uh, restoration, hmm. and uh, I've let I've put prototype a bit aside, and now I'm more on restoration. I work at uh, Atelier Hugo. It's a quite new workshop in in Belgium, and I, I'm working on a Sierra. I've never worked on a Sierra before, and it's a very small car. I mean, uh, it run in, uh, it um, it raced the uh, Mille Miglia. I don't want to say the year because I'm not sure. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say uh, I don't want to say uh, something wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's a small car, uh, aluminium body, and uh, I'm doing yeah right now the the body. I'd like to post more on Instagram, but I don't like to to post unfinished thing like a bit sketchy. I like things to be quite nice and finished like i'm going to the bottom of it like we can see that i go to the bottom of it so yeah uh, soon i will post more picture but uh yeah right now i'm uh, i'm doing i'm making panels right now yeah um how long does it take to restore a car like this mm, i haven't started it i haven't started it but right now almost all the panels are made i've i kept some i did metal finishing on, I mean, uh, it's quite the usual scenario. Usually you keep the middle, what is all, what is the catwalk and what, yeah, the, uh, the reverse, the, the, mm -hmm. the top parts, usually they're good. This is the mm -hmm. bottom parts that usually take the rust um, or the um, corrosion. So I'm doing basically all the, what we, in French, we call it the belt of the car. So all around the car i keep the top parts and i do all around uh and right now i'm at uh, i'm at i'm at almost 300 hours 
and it's difficult to estimate, but I think I will uh, be at good point. It, uh, usually it's the pre-assembly work that takes where there is some unexpected uh, things, but uh, ready to do the pre-assembly work, I think uh, 400, 500 hours. Yeah, it's a yeah, big window, but yeah, four, 500, yeah. I think. Yeah, and are you working on this car alone or is there other people on this one with you? Yeah, no, I'm alone. I'm alone. I haven't done the chassis. Chassis was made, but mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I have to do all the the panel work. Yeah, you have the to make fun it, part. So I'm make it beautiful, right? Yeah, this is also the the fun part of being um, a freelance. Is that uh, a, when you arrive in company, um, they prepare everything for you. So the car is already disassembled, is already on the jig, and ready to work on. The mm. client has already uh, agreed on the, the price, so you haven't managed anything. So you just arrive and you hit on, and work. you can do the panel work. And this is this is the nice part. So I'm dealing with the clients uh, and everything is. Sometimes it's uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of other work aside. So I'd like to yeah. keep the fun part. <laughs> I'm like a child. <laughs> it's true. You know what? Operating a business, you've got overhead and you have to pay the utilities and all the bills and the customers. Exactly. And it's that is a business in itself. And building a car is a business. They're very different skills, right? Yeah. 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 I see it. And, uh, and I, I know some very, very skilled. Um, and I work for a very, very skilled uh, coach builder. Mm -hmm. Then you could see that that all the the work aside which is uh, accounting managing the clients uh everything it, it takes them it they are not made they are not made for that they make it work but for them it's very difficult and uh sometimes i i, I mean sometimes I, I used to tell one of my uh, clients clients fr slash friend slash i mean co-worker you should be a, a foreman, a foreman in a, in a, in a coach builder workshop. And you don't have all the, the, or a foreman or just a, a freelance. You should do yeah. that. Yeah. When you have a family, it's not, it's not easy. I mean, I'm single and I don't have any attachment. So it's easy for me to go around and stuff. It's a kind of life that you choose, mm -hmm. but. It depends. Sometimes I see some people that are struggling and not with the panel work. They're struggling really with all the rest, the gestion of the tax payment of the everything. And yeah. it's taking them a lot of their energy and you, you find it, uh, and it and it take off the, um, the, the fun. They can't, they can't have fun in, in metal shaping anymore because they are too much thing in their head. And you're like, oh, that's such a shame. Yeah. such a shame and i don't want to fall in that yeah what other what other types of cars have you worked on in the past to get you to the point that you know you're very proficient at what you do <laughs> uh i don't know i've worked on a lot of stuff a lot of italian scar i have to say <laughs> but uh, i had the chance to work on um when i was in italy i had the chance to work on the uh, different restoration projects, uh, what can I? What is, there is there is many, and I can't choose one. It's it's difficult, but uh, yeah, I remember doing an Espada, and it, it was not a lot of shape, and an Espada, and a Lamborghini Espada, not a lot of shape. This is almost straight, but this is what is complicated. <laughs> and you you think you look at the car, you're like, oh, that's not really beautiful but it's my point of view mm -hmm. and uh, but oh, it's quite straight it's going to be easy and you find out that the panel work is a bloody nightmare it's, <laughs> yeah really a nightmare and it makes you grow you're like oh okay it 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 teach you a lot i mean i don't come from uh smash and repairs so some of the thin you know, thin panel work alignment and stuff for me was difficult difficult mm -hmm. at the beginning and this is the kind of car that make, made me grow a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh, that's straight. Yeah, typical uh, Bertoni. 
uh, straight and with um, how do you say uh, edges line. all yep. around all around the body edges that has to align and Italians are very um, uh, they want it uh, perfect even they want it perfect even like perfect perfect today when you restore a Also, but also uh, area uh, when I used to work in uh, in another com in another company, not in Italy, for I was doing prototype, and I had the chance to work on the um, uh, uh, bespoke uh, Rolls Royce. Oh, and uh, it was a. Uh, yeah, it was quite something very stressful. Also, Pano, the Rolls Royce, there isn't many shape. It's yeah. it's huge. It's six meters of car. Yeah. It's huge. Isn't and it interesting when you Pano's compare something are... like a, when you compare like an earlier Ferrari to you know a large Rolls Royce? Like there's twice the car there to work on, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's uh I mean I don't know how do you park that kind of car because <laughs> it's a modern car yeah. and it's now really huge and six meters of car and uh, and there is an edge that that runs all this all along the six meters and it has yeah. to it's only two doors so it was I remember the the door panels was a meter a meter twenty I don't know what is it what it is in inches. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, a meter twenty was. Uh, yeah, a meter, a meter twenty is like four feet. Okay, yeah, yeah. Four, it, I mean, huge, huge, huge. Yeah. To metal finish, to having the line at run, it was a, it was an admin. And Rolls Royce, they have this particularity. They want their uh, panel work to be really precise. So mm -hmm. they have uh, when they design the car, they design it. They come up with a three D. <laughs> And so they make a uh, they made a buck. Um, we make the panel work and everything. We assemble the car and they scan the car. And on the computer, they they um, they uh, take the three D that they had the design and they make it match. And they see when where there is differences. And they come up to you with a diagram. So okay, here you are with colors and it's. You're like, oh, that's nice. There was a lot of colors. Yeah, that's not good when there's colors. <laughs> uh, when uh, when um, when you're far out, it's it tends to the red, and when you're far in, it tends to the blue. So mm. you have all the color, and when it's green, it's good. Yeah. And so <laughs> and so they ask you like two millimeters tolerance everywhere on a six meter car. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so it it um. It takes a lot of time for small details. So uh, it's yeah, it was very stressful and very difficult. <laughs> you yeah. Very nice. At the end, you're very happy to to have worked to be part of that project. When that you're putting a nice. when you're putting a body line in a car like that, that's so long. Would you make the panel, hang it on the car, and then once all of the panels are on the car, then tape it off and do the entire body line? All at once, or do you pre-do the body line and hope that all the panels come together? Well, that's the problem. It was uh, they made a buck, so they made a, a full, a full hard buck with a very hard material. I don't know what yeah. it costed, but it must have been something. Yeah. And so on the buck, the line go. But uh, mm -hmm. even when you hammer on the buck and you make make it on a buck, when you go on the car, if, if your uh, inner structure is slightly off and there is so many, so many uh, factor that can make it go wrong, make it, make it go slightly low, up, out or in, it's, oh, <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> so usually, yeah, they, uh, it's a prototype. So it's everything is industrialized so the process is already it's already uh, i mean they make the bug before so yeah so yeah you kind of have to make it you have to go forward you make everything and you put it on the car you pull tapes ah you have to move it slightly and then move it and then yeah that's it it is how it is and it's a, it's a long process and a lot of uh, of tape <laughs> but, uh, yeah after you were finished doing a car like that, I mean, how did you feel? That's a that's a big project. You're happy. 
Yeah. <laughs> you're happy. On the moment, you're happy. You're like, oh, it's finished because it's a lot of uh, stress. And the end is not funny at all. The, the big part of it is fun, but the end is not, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry. It's part of the job also. It's not fun at all because you're yeah. like looking at the small detail and then you have the Rolls Royce people coming like, and they, yeah. uh, they are, they, <laughs> they have, um, stickers, like little stickers. And yep. they put stickers all about that. <laughs> if it's a blue stickers, it's not so bad. If it's a green stickers, it's a, or if it's a red, oh, that's a red stickers. Oh my God. <laughs> and then, then they give you reviews and you have to, to, to Fix it. Yeah, correct it. But sometimes you have to disassemble all the back. And so you have to disassemble all the back just to hammer a little, mm. a little something. And you're like, oh goodness. And yeah. this is a lot of time going off yeah, this way. So. Do they not use filler? body filler in that circumstance yes yeah no yes there is but they want the body work to be as perfect as possible so yep. so yeah they 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 really care about quality at the end the panel weren't very shiny because we almost metal finished everything because we have to oh. you know touch a little bit here touch a little bit here and you correct that and <laughs> we moved uh, actually almost everything so it wasn't any shiny panel it was all a uh, scotch bright brush, uh, yep. but uh, still, it's still nice when you see it uh, all assem pre-assembled. You're like, oh, that's satisfying, and you're also happy that it's finished. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair. Is it really? I mean, is it the is it the historical significance in a situation like this that really drives somebody to want this type of a car uh, put back together again, or is there is it fam? Like, what what drives people to want this type of work to be completed for them? uh that's uh that's a good question i mean do you mean uh why do why do why do you pre-assemble everything before or what what does what do they care for this really small detail yeah i mean from the customer perspective they have to have a reason to want this car to be completed for them right so what do you what do you think that yes. reason is like when they come to you and they say hey i want my car to be rebuilt why do you think they're doing that it's about uh, uh it's another i don't like this word but uh, prestige it's yeah. about to yeah. it's also for the marketing to be able to say that the car was made exactly how it should until the last bolt mm -hmm. the last little detail the last little filing the last metal finishing everything was perfect so it's kind of to be able to say it because i'm pretty sure when we were at 70 percent, we were for us we were almost finished and they made us like move a little bit and <laughs> the car was would have been almost slightly different but almost the same if we have just done it this way but they want it perfectly symmetric also and that's what is difficult when it's a handmade car and you have yeah. two millimeters tolerance on a six meter car and everything has to be aligned we had we had measurements um tools and this is a lot of measurements all the time to be sure that you are perfect and it's a lot of time for precision but it i don't think it really serve the design but for them it's marketing yeah so yeah what's next for you ask. man what's next for you what's next for ludo metal arts what's going on <laughs> uh what's next for me uh i'd like to settle a little bit in belgium with the with the boys here because it's a very good uh atmosphere and I'd like to do my own project. I'm, I'm going to do a little, uh, how can I call it? A metal, a metal art special. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to, I'd like to make a car. I'd like to do, I'd like to make everything that nobody never asked me to do. Like oh, uh, wow. uh, drawing, con uh, conceiving. I don't know if this is the right word. Conceiving mm -hmm. and making a making a car just for I, th I think just for myself yeah yeah i don't yep. i mean i'm just gonna come up with a design and and make something and i really feel now i really feel the need to do it it's like uh it's like a child dream so <laughs> I'd, I'd like to yeah doing my car doing any inspirations car. in that design any inspirations that you would pull from other Italian cars, French cars. I, I I believe on the design, the exterior would be. I think it will be a 
like kind of Italian like kind of Italian like but maybe a little bit like English also yeah because I don't want it to be too you know too much but uh, on the conception I don't think it's gonna be Italian on, yeah. the, con on the conception more uh, f something fun something like aviation like uh, aviation like I, I had the, the chance to work for aeronautic a little bit also mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's gonna be something like that so just it's it's about having fun it's not about the um, destination the journey it's about making it i will have fun to make it maybe when i will have have it done i want to say yeah put it in the <laughs> angle <laughs> in the, probably because it's about having fun because uh, if you lose the passion if you lose the passion just you shouldn't do it yeah it's, no. yeah well, man, speaking of fun, this has been so much fun. Um, just to have you here on the show today, you know, to spend the last 45 minutes or so together has been amazing. Um, two things that I really took from the episode. One is your sincerity. Um, you can just tell that you're a genuinely good person. You're like, you're a kind soul. You're happy. You're fun to be around. You know, th that's amazing. And also your willingness to learn. Uh, it's spectacular. Touring around the country and seeing all the things that you've seen uh, and absorbing what you've been able to absorb is, is truly fantastic. So uh, from this side of the mic, from me to you, thank you so much for being on the show. Where can people find out more about you? Well, I'm quite, I'm quite shy, you know, I operate in the shadow, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have an Instagram at uh, Ludo Metal Arts, all attached. And uh, yeah, I don't post a lot, but uh, I try to work on that in the, in the future. Yeah. And I have the most important, I think is to inspire people i hope i inspire some people <laughs> and uh yeah hope it gives uh, the the wish for some people to to start this uh profession because it's cool it's cool amazing there you have it luda roland uh thanks for tuning into the sheet metal shaping podcast don't forget to like share follow and subscribe and we will see you on the next episode